welcome students so in the previous class <coughs> we were talking about the uh, a company hypothetical uh, limited uh, the company's uh, uh, financial requirement was given to us and uh, we had to work out that uh, how they should manage the funds what are the different sources they should manage the funds from uh, so that uh, the cost of funds becomes minimum uh, it, the, the total cost of the funds goes down and in that case we have seen that uh, uh, we have different approaches we, as we have been talking about we have different approaches like say your conservative aggressive and uh, uh, the, the hedging or matching approach. <coughs> So, we assumed in the previous class that say in the normal circumstances it is not possible to use the aggressive approach, it is not the ball game of every firm or every organization. So, uh, largely the firms use either the conservative approach or the matching approach or the hedging approach. Even using the hedging approach is also requiring uh, a lot of discipline, financial discipline, punctuality, regularity and they have to be very, very careful that any payment when becoming due to be made that should be uh, made on time as I have told you in some uh, say uh, previous classes that financial discipline uh, as far as the short term funds management is concerned is, uh, is concerned demands that <coughs> If any payment is due to be made to any supplier, maybe tomorrow, uh, say uh, uh, till 10 o'clock or 10 a.m., the check should reach him. It's better to send the payment by today evening rather than delaying it by tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, that's not considered as a good thing because what happens? There is a uh, symbiosis, a kind of uh, proper arrangements. Maybe our supplier is depending upon us, or the supplier of any firm is depending upon that firm. That by tomorrow, say uh, uh, today, uh, say if, if it is uh, uh, 6 December, and tomorrow 7 December, he is expecting a check of 3 lakh rupees from uh, the company XYZ Limited that I have supplied to them, and tomorrow is the due date, and they will make me the payment. And uh, uh, if the company delays the payment, Right. So, uh, he is expecting that the payment will uh, arrive at or the check will arrive at 10 a.m. tomorrow and that same check he will deposit in the bank and against their check he will write another check to his supplier or to uh, anybody who to whom he has to make the payment or he has to make the payment to his workers or maybe to somebody else and he has made the arrangements like that I will receive the payment in the one hand and immediately after that I will make the payment to my, my supplier or to, to somebody to whom I have to make the payment. So, if you delay the payment by tomorrow, if the firm XYZ Limited delays the payment, if they take it lightly that not tomorrow morning 10 a.m., it, it may be sent by 5 or 6 p.m. in the evening or maybe next day, we can delay it by one day. So, what is happening? Because of the say financial indiscipline of the XYZ Limited, the say a total arrangement of the, the XYZ the suppliers are disturbed and like that is disturbing the total symbiosis, his suppliers arrangements will also be disturbed, his employees arrangements will also be disturbed, everybody will be disturbed. So, it is not considered as a good practice. So, we have to be sure that any time if any payment is due to be made to any of the suppliers or any of the stakeholders that should be made, it is better to make the payment before time, but never delay the payment beyond the due date or the due time. So, for that reason we assume that it is not possible to follow the aggressive approach, it is better to follow the say not conservative I would say because that will increase the financial cost beyond a level. So, if it is possible to follow the hedging approach or matching approach then it is fine otherwise what we can do is we can have a trade off. So, we saw in the previous class that how we can work out a trade off. We have seen that total requirement of the company there is a minimum and the maximum requirement was 6900 was the minimum requirement and uh, say 9000 was the maximum requirement over the period of 12 months. And when we calculated it by following a conservative approach our cost went up that was somewhere 7 120 million rupees or 1000 rupees or whatever it is. So, I think that was too high and when we worked it out by using uh, say your uh, uh, the matching approach or the hedging approach the cost came down to 581 uh, million rupees. So, miss uh, here also you can say that we have two extremes. Uh, uh, say uh, because under the matching approach you have zero networking capital. There is no question that if any of the current assets are not convertible into cash due to any reason because how do we move to use the cash in the form? First of all we use the cash which is in hand then cash at bank then we uh, say <coughs> 
uh, sell the marketable securities which are there with the form as a very short term investments we sell the marketable securities once these two cash and the marketable securities are fully exhausted then we try to generate funds from the sundry debtors and sundry debtors because they will not make the payment to the firm uh, before the due date normally. So, the firm can say offer them discount, uh, they, they can resort to a strategy that okay now a payment from some supplier is due after 15 days. So, if he can make the payment as tomorrow then I think it will serve the purpose. So, how we can induce him so that he can prepone the payment date by 15 days. So, for that he would like to have something that some incentive should be given to him. So, firm can decide that okay, let us uh, give him some discount, maybe we can give him 1 or 2 percent discount of the total payment, cash discount especially, uh, so that he can prepone the, he should have the reason to prepone the payment. So, if we give him the discount, so we can say okay, after giving discount for 2 percent or by 2 percent or up to 2 percent, he is going to make the payment to us, so that can be tried. So, that way we will serve the purpose and if we, we, we need more funds then the other debtors also can be induced by giving the discount and if it is not possible then there is a way that we can take the help of the bank. Whatever the credit sales bills firm has, whatever the credit sale bills of the firm has, normally those debtors are going to pay. Uh, on the due date and that if the de due date is after say a month or maybe uh, after 2 months or 45 days. I think uh, giving the discount may not be a right proposition because they would expect a big amount of discount uh, say a large amount of discount maybe 2, 3, 4 percent. That may not be in the interest of the firm. So, what the firm can do? Those credit sale bills can be got discounted from the banks. Banks easily give the money by keeping those bills as a security because banks know it that this firm has sold on credit to uh, the different people in the market and those people bank uh, should be knowing or normally banks know the credit rating of the buyers. If the credit rating or the financial reputation of those buyers is good in that case banks normally uh, do not mind in buying the bills. So, banks purchase the credit sale bills and then <coughs> they release the funds up to 80 percent of the credit sale bill and 20 percent they release it on the settlement of the amount which is paid by the debtor either to the bank or to the company and finally on the due date or on the settlement date. So, it means in that way we can generate the funds and if, if anything is, um, is not working or maybe all the avenues have been fully exhausted then you have to go for the selling of inventory in the market, but that is uh, as you can call it as the, the, the least uh, liquid asset. You cannot convert the inventory into cash as and when you want it because if you want to sell the inventory in the market even e either we have to give the huge discount or we have to sell it on the credit in the market. So, that is not going to provide any liquidity to the firm. So, we should be careful that when you are following a matching approach or hedging approach in that case what is happening? <coughs> you have no cushion means there is a zero amount of the funds coming from the long term sources. We are a what we had created a watertight compartment The short term all short term needs or current assets fully will be financed from the short term sources only. No funding will come from the long term sources only. So, it means on the on the say uh, uh, say pretext of saving the financial cost, we are creating the liquidity problem. So, we can say that we as we saw in the previous class that we have seen that yes cost is coming down to 580 uh, million rupees from 720 million rupees, but the risk is also going up. Networking capital is 0, liquidity position uh, is quite tight. So, uh, we can say that what to talk of aggressive even to some extent your hedging approach is also one extreme. So, we try to find out a trade off and then we saw that we can have a trade off. So, we change the situation that okay, what is the maximum requirement that is 9000 and what is the minimum requirement 6900. So, you divide this maximum plus minimum divided by 2 and when we worked out this requirement. So, we saw that that requirement has changed went up little up miss average amount when we worked up that amount went up that is from 6900 minimum to the 7950. So, we can say that we have taken the average amount that is 7950 and when we worked out that average amount of 7950, we saw that this amount not 6900, but 7950 will come from the long term sources and the remaining amount we worked out for every month which was the seasonal requirement.
and when we worked out the seasonal requirement so that seasonal requirement we uh, could find out that the total of the seasonal requirement uh, was that is somewhere 2700 rupees when we worked out the requirement we could see that <coughs> 7950 uh, will come from the long term sources and the remaining will come from the short term sources. So, we worked out the seasonal requirement and when we worked out the seasonal requirement the total was uh, say total as compared to the uh, say previous case which was 11600 for the whole of the year divided by 12. We could find out that whole of the year now the requirement is 2700 from the which is a seasonal fluctuating requirement when we divided it by 12. So, monthly requirement worked out as 225. Then we calculated the financial cost by applying the interest rate of 3 percent on the short term finance and 8 percent on the long term finance and then we worked out the cost and the cost came out as that is uh, total cost came down and that cost worked out was 600. 42.75 or you can say 643 which is quite less from 720 but little more from 581 so it is in between. So, what we have done here is that we have increased the liquidity. So, by increasing the liquidity you are reducing the risk and we are increasing the financial cost little bit which will impact the profitability. But profitability is not everything for the firms along with the profitability you have the reputation of the firm financial reputation of the firm also and that should also be not at stake. So, in that case rather than means saving only upon the cost and taking huge risk it is better for the firms that you increase the financial cost little bit and you minimize the risk to the extent it is possible by increasing the networking capital and by increasing the liquidity right. So, because it was very quickly done in the previous class. So, I thought of say just having a discussion on this case that why we followed the trade off approach which was the in between approach of conservative as well as the hedging approach. And we assumed that in the normal circumstances following the aggressive approach or the negative working capital may not be possible for all the firms. So, it is better to go for the trade off between the hedging and the <coughs> uh, hedging and the conservative approach right. So, now we will see uh, certain other important aspects uh, with regard to managing the working capital. Uh, we have been talking that the level of current assets should be as low as possible. We have seen in the uh, say, say previous uh, discussion also and a case also uh, the balance sheet when we saw that total assets were 14,000 where 6,000 or 5,400 were from the say were the current assets and 8,600 are the uh, say your fixed assets or the long term assets. So, <coughs> then we calculated the cost then we calculated the profits then we calculated the liquidity networking capital when we jacked up the level of current assets from 5400 to 6000 by 600 uh, rupees or million or whatever it is we have seen that, that as the amount of the current asset increases being current asset being least productive our cost has increased profitability has declined though the liquidity has improved. Then we reduce the level of current asset then we saw that liquidity has gone down risk has increased but the profitability has gone down. So, means that the conclusion is that current assets are least productive assets we have seen in the beginning classes also that neither inventory has any return nor credit sales has any return nor cash has any return only marketable securities are giving us some return. So, in that case. <coughs> Ultimately, means we are bound to keep the current assets in the balance sheet of the firm, but that should be as low as possible. So, uh, we, are, we are seeing we have made a small analysis for your uh, say uh, help that uh, you feel convinced that yes, level of current asset is impacting the profitability. So, if you see the this these three situations we have created, you can say that these are the uh, say uh, three different approaches. Right, uh, one approach is like you can say the first approach is the conservative approach, which we are saying in the column A. Column B is the hedging approach or matching approach, and column C is uh, here we are following the aggressive approach. Right. So if you see these, so look at the last column. That column is that is the ratio of current asset to fixed asset, and the ratio of the current asset to fixed asset here is say uh, you can say that is one is to one. That out of the total assets of the one million rupees, that is ten lakh rupees. Rupees, half of the assets are fixed asset and half of the assets are the current assets. So, if you do like this look at the ROI, ROI is just 15 percent return on investment is just 15 percent. 
Then you move to the next level, we increase the, uh, we reduce the level of current assets somewhat, not much, but we reduce the level of current assets, we reduce the level of total assets also and we reduce the level of uh, say uh, current assets. So, it means <coughs> we are not doing the business not by having total assets of the 1 million or 10 lakh rupees, but by having only the uh, say uh, total assets of 9 lakh, rup uh, 9 lakh rupees, out of which fixed asset level is same that is 5 lakh rupees, but we have been able to reduce the current assets. As I told you that the current assets level should be as low as possible. So, we have reduced the level of current assets. So, you see that the ratio has also changed, the ratio now is that is the 0 0.8 is to 1 and if you see the column B, the last column, in the column B the last row that the ratio has now changed, come down from the 1 is to 1 to 0 0.8 is to 1 and when you have reduced the level of current assets, your ROI has is, say, gone up that is from 15 percent to 16.67 percent. And then you see we are, we, move, we are moving to the next level by keeping the lowest level of current assets. Now, we have reduced the level of current assets not 5 lakhs, not 4 lakhs, but we have come down to 3 lakhs. And now we are running the show uh, with the total amount of the assets that is of 8 lakhs. 5 lakhs are the fixed assets and 3 lakhs are the current assets. So, we are not disturbing the fixed assets by keeping the same amount of fixed assets. If you are reducing the level of current assets, ratio has also changed, ratio is now 0 0.6 is to 1. So, it means as against 100 percent of the current assets in the first policy or in the first column, we have reduced it to 60 percent as compared to the fixed assets and you can see the impact of this that your ROI has seriously gone up that is almost by say 3 percent that is 2.75 percent it has gone up, it has increased uh, which was 15 percent in the say uh, when the policy A was being followed and the level of current asset was equal to the level of fixed asset. So, it came down into the column B and when you change the policy B, you became uh, aggressive means you can say this is a kind of a situation of the negative working capital that we have 80 percent, 60 percent of current assets against the 100 percent of the uh, current liabilities. So, it means we have the negative working capital and we are more aggressive in this case ratio has also come down and the impact of that is the on the ROI. So, it means we can prove it we are convinced now that the level of current assets in any firm should be as low as possible because they are the least productive assets only we should try to maximize the fixed assets and minimize the current assets right. Now, we move to the next level and we look it from the other perspective. <coughs> sources of financing, finance sources of financing the assets of the firm, total assets of the firm if you look at. And here also I tell you that say uh, your short term finance is cheaper as compared to the long term finance because of the term structure of interest rates. So, we should try to have larger amount of the funds, I would not say the maximum funds from the short term sources, but the larger component or amount of the funds coming from the short term sources rather than from the long term sources. Now, we will move to the next part that is <coughs> say next thing that is the it is one more uh, important concept that uh, till now we have seen that say how the current asset impact the profitability or level of the current assets impact the profitability. Now, let us see from the other perspective that is from the financing. So, I have been talking to you that <coughs> Short term sources of the funds are uh, lesser expensive as compared to the long term sources of the funds. And in this case, uh, we have to see, we have to verify that whether it happens or not. Now, for example, you see that we have again the situation like the total uh, fixed assets are for 3 lakh rupees and the current assets are for 2 lakh rupees. So, total assets are 5 lakh rupees, right. Now, total assets of the 5 lakh rupees, how they will be funded? They will be funded, we have seen in the first case that is the first approach, conservative approach. Under the conservative approach, we are say providing say uh, out of say 3 lakh rupees, which is coming from the debt that is a borrowed capital. A total requirement is of the 5 lakhs. So, 3 lakhs we are showing here that 3 lakh is coming from the borrowed sources as a debt or as a long term loan or as debentures or anything and remaining is coming from the share capital. So, that 3 lakh rupees which is a borrowed capital that is coming in the form of 
short term debt as well as the long term debt. And we have assumed here that the cost of the short term debt is 12 percent and the cost of the long term debt is 14 percent. So, look at the conservative policy the column 1 first column <coughs> or the second column in this case uh, under, under the financing plans first is the conservative policy under the conservative policy how we are financing the total asset requirement that is from the borrowed sources 240,000 rupees are coming from the long term sources and only 60,000 is coming from the uh, say uh, short term sources which is just 12 percent which is just 12 percent and it is coming from the short term sources uh, uh, as you call it, call it as the ratio of the total finance I am talking about. It is not the ratio of the say long term to short term debt total finance that is the 5 lakhs out of that 5 lakh rupees 60,000 that is just 12 percent is coming from the short term sources and remaining amount is coming from the long term sources including share capital. So, look at the total cost profit before interest and taxes 90,000 rupees interest component is 40,800 rupees earning before taxes 49,200 tax at the rate of 35 percent so it is 17. 1220 and if you calculate the ROE that is the return on equity so it is 16 <coughs> percent it is just 16 percent because we are only arranging 12 percent of the total requirement of 5 lakhs from short term sources. Now you move to the moderate plan or the say, say, say you can call it as uh, hedging plan we have increased the component proportion of the uh, short term finance as against the total requirement and now it is not 60,000 it is 150,000 rupees. So, from the borrowed capital which is the debt component half is coming 50 percent is coming from the short term sources and 50 percent is coming from the long term sources. And if you have seen this change then the impact of this change we have we can easily find out is number one is the ratio of the short term funds to the total funds has gone up by say a sufficient amount that is 18 percent from 12 percent to 30 percent and <coughs> as a result of that we can see here that your profit before interest and taxes same 90,000 interest component has on gone down seriously that is 39,000 and then earning before tax is that is 51,000 tax is the same amount we have we are taking tax here as a 17. 850 and your return on equity has improved from 16 percent to 16.58 percent. And in the third approach which is the aggressive approach more amount of the funds is coming from the short term sources as against the long term sources and we are so aggressive that you see that the ratio is that uh, the, the, the proportion of short term funds as compared to the total funds 60 percent of the funds are coming from the short term sources and if you talk about the borrowed capital borrowed capital in the borrowed capital nothing is coming from the long term sources entire amount is coming from the short term sources that is 3 lakh rupees from the short term borrowings and remaining uh, 2 lakhs is coming as a share capital as it was coming under the previous two approaches. So, borrowed capital is 100 percent from the short term sources it being a cheaper source look at your PBT is again profit before interest and tax is again 90,000, but look at the interest component which has come down from the 40,800 under the first approach which came down to 90, 39,000 under the second and it has come down to 36,000 under the third approach. And as a result of that your net income has improved and net income which was uh, say you can say uh, 31,000 around <coughs> it has it became 33,000 and now it has become 35,100 and ROE if you calculate which has gone up by almost 1.55 percent or uh, not two uh, yeah 1.55 percent which was 16 percent uh, in the first approach rose up to 16.58 percent and now it is 17.55 percent. So, it means you can easily find out you can easily verify the impact of <coughs> the say, say composition of the funds if the more funds are coming from the short term sources as compared to the long term sources as far as the borrowed capital is concerned in that case your cost of funds total financial cost is going to seriously go down and impact of that is the increased profitability increased uh, income and the increased return on the 
equity because ultimately it is the benefit of the equity shareholders for the firm that after servicing the borrowed capital or after providing the debt or paying the <coughs> interest on the debt on the borrowed capital remaining amount of the profit or income goes to the equity shareholders. So, equity shareholders are at the benefit. So, they should try to generate maximum funds from short term sources I would say is, uh, maximum, but yes as much as possible funds from the short term sources so that the co financial cost can be <coughs> managed. But you see the problem of the short term funds is that when you are arranging the funds from the short term sources, your financial cost is going to go down, but your risk is also increasing because making the payment to the short term sources becomes quickly due. So, we have to have the sufficient liquidity in the firm so that we can service the short term debt as and when it becomes due to be paid and the interest to be paid on that. And finally, we can maximize the profitability. That much caution we have to keep. If we are able to keep the caution and to maintain the liquidity in the firm, it is always better to have the funds from the short term sources, more funds from the short term sources as compared to the long term sources. Right? Now, we talk about the <coughs> certain uh, say cases of certain companies that how they have been managing their working capital. <coughs> We have the situation uh, of the three companies here and these three companies belong to the same sector that is the steel sector. In the steel sector you see I told you uh, in the previous classes also sometimes little bit not more that in the steel sector we have number of companies working now in India. After 1991 the steel sector is opened up for the say private participation and uh, uh, many companies have entered in this sector. So, uh, if you talk about the, the companies now if you compare the uh, uh, same, uh, say steel sector or the position of the players, business players in the steel sector before 1991, uh, sale was having the largest market share, some part was with Tesco, uh, but sale was the steel maker to the nation. Right. But after that, we have seen that some companies have come in the western part of the country like SR, Lloyd Steels, they have come in the western part, they are serving the western mar market. In the southern part of the country, uh, Jindal's created a very uh, high tech, Asia is the first high tech plant that is JBSL, Jindal Vijayanagar Steel Plant, which is now called as, as is now it has become the part of the Jindal Steel Works, JSW. So, it means now the sale has to uh, say lose market, sales overall financial performance has been affected. And if you see the liquidity, how they are managing the liquidity of the firm or how they are managing the working capital, here you can see that the current ratio of the sale <coughs> from the these ratios are somewhere from 2001 to 2012. For the past 10 years, <coughs> you can say, so uh, the ratio is very high. Standard norm of the <coughs> current ratio which was earlier, uh, uh, I would say that you know, the norms of the uh, say current ratios have changed. If you talk about the norms of current ratio, earlier before 1991 the norms of current ratio was, current ratio is that is the norm was 2 is to 1, then uh, we have the quick ratio or you call it this ratio is the asset risk ratio also this was uh, uh, 1.5, <coughs> you can say it, it was 1.5 is to 1. This norm was 1.5 is to 1 and uh, for the cash or the super quick ratio, this is the super quick ratio, this is the old norm which was 1 is to 1. <coughs> this was the, these are the old norms, but now the new norms are like that if you see the norms currently uh, prevailing in the market, the uh, proper, so you can call it the acceptable level of the current ratio is 1.33 is to 1. This ratio is considered good as 1 is to 1 and this ratio is considered good as 0 0.5 is to 1. So, these are the new norms of the current ratios. We have reduced the level of say <coughs> current assets. Now, for example, when it was 2 is to 1. So, what was the situation that <coughs> we had to keep current assets 100 percent more than the current liabilities. Means if you have say a current assets, uh, if your current liabilities are, are of the 5000 rupees, then you have to have the current assets of the 10,000 rupees. So, means 100 percent more than the current liabilities you have to keep the current assets. And I told you that after the term structure of interest rates, when you are seeing that this is the uh, current ratio. So, current ratio is here. Uh, uh, when we are, we are having a current ratio of 2 is to 1, it means networking capital is how much? That is 1. So, it means and this networking capital will come from where? From the long term sources LTS and long term sources are highly expensive. So, if you are increasing the 
proportion of the long term sources to finance your short term requirements and that proportion is 100 percent of your current liabilities. There are how much funds are coming from the short term spontaneous and short term sources, same amount of the funds is coming from the long term sources. So, in that case you can understand how much is going to be the financial cost of the firm, how much expenses are going to increase and how much the financial cost is going to increase. So, in that case it was very, very difficult for the firms to survive in a changed economic scenario where, where they have to face the competition from the best players in the market and if their financial cost is so high because now if you are calculating the total cost of the product, if you are calculating the total cost of the product, we have the raw material cost, we have the uh, other uh, uh, say overheads cost, we have labor cost, we have some indirect expenses like office expenses, electricity, power, water, all these costs are there, we, we cal calculate and add it up and then <coughs> we have the financial cost. Till 1991 in India the scenario was that financial cost was not considered as a very important cost. It was not for one company, all the companies were following the same norm. Largely most of the companies were or most of the business sectors in India were controlled by the public sector companies and in the public sector companies something means uh, on the name of financial discipline almost there was nothing. Easy capital was available from the government, government was providing the easy capital, huge country was the market available to them. So, whatever is going to be the cost of the production, if there is only single player in the market manufacturing the product in the market, you have no option to buy the product from any source. In that case, whatever the price they want to charge, whatever the cost is there and whatever the price they want to charge, you have to pay the price. You have no option because the basis of deciding the price is the cost. So, if the cost is high, so it means the price will also be high keeping their margin intact. So, it means everybody was paying the same price. So, that was the case with the sale also. Sale you see the entire steel sector of this country, we were almost 100 crore people, 1 billion people at that time or maybe more than that. And this market of the 1 billion people was being served steel market for the 1 billion people was being served by only one single company largely, Tisco was also there but large market share was with the sale. And if you have only one company, you have no other option, whatever the garbage they are manufacturing and selling to us and at the cost or at the price they are selling it to us, we are bound to have it, there is no comparison. <coughs> same was the case with other sectors also. If you talk about the other sectors, that was the same case. Say even even petroleum sector is even today marketing of the petroleum product is even today dominated by the public sector companies. Now some private sector companies have started coming up in the market like SR Reliance, but it will take time. Uh, so that's we are buying this is the petroleum products at a very high price in the Indian market, and we are paying for the inefficiencies of these public sector companies. So that was the situation at that time, <coughs> and because of this. We were running the show with this very high current ratio of 2 is to 1, where we are keeping 100 percent of the funds from the long term sources as a safeguard. This was basically a cushion that this cushion should be there that if all the current liabilities if are paid to be paid at one point of time. So, we will start from the assets, current assets. First, we will use the cash, then we will use the marketable securities, <coughs> then we will use the sundry. Uh, debtors and then we use the inventory and if any of the current assets are not convertible into cash that is the sundry debtors and inventory then the funds will be roped in from the long term sources because we have already kept the current ratio too high that is 2 is to 1. So, it means there is no problem and liquidity is always there and at the cost of liquidity we are losing something that is a profit because your financial cost is very high. So, we were having the very high current ratio and since nobody bothers about the cost in this country we are bothered at that time. So, it means there is no question on the cost of the product that at what uh, cost the product is being manufactured and at what price it is being sold to the people because there was no comparison. Similarly, the case was with the quick ratio 1.5 is to 1 and super quick ratio it means you had to keep the cash or almost near cash liquidity pure liquidity and backup liquidity cash and marketable securities that should be equal to 100 percent of your current liabilities. So, look at the financial indiscipline I would say at that time. So, <coughs> these were the rules of thumbs of the ratios and now we have brought down these rules of thumbs to the ratio of these ratios that is from say 2 is to 1 to 1.33 is to 1 
1.5 is to 1 to 1 is to 1 and 1 is to 1 from 1 is to 1 to <coughs> 0 0.5 is to 1. So, we have brought down these rules uh, of the thumbs of the liquidity or the liquidity ratios. Why we have done that and what is the benefit we are going to reap out of it that we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.